All right, welcome everybody to another B Mother review. And today we've got our first review of a statue from Figurama Collectors. Now they're sort of a newer company on the statue collectible scene. Uh, they've been around for a year or two and they focus a lot on anime franchises. Uh, so today we've got Devilman versus Eamon from the anime Eamon Apocalypse of Devilman. Now, uh, I'll get a couple things uh, straight off the top of this review. Uh, I don't speak Japanese, so I will likely mispronounce some things, uh, and I apologize to anyone who's offended by that. And I, I'm not, um, I don't claim to be a lifelong anime fan. Anime is something I've really come into more the last sort of four or five years. Um, you know, I grew up in Western Canada, kind of Northwestern Canada, and um, you know, anime just wasn't big here as I was growing up. But uh, since we started the Statue Awards competition uh, four years ago, um, you know, I've really been drawn to the art. I've, I've been exposed to a lot of the anime statues around, um, around the market. And, you know, the artwork, I don't know about you guys, but when I see good art, I mean, I'm drawn in and I want to know more. So anime is something I'm learning about. And Devilman is one of the ones that, that piqued my interest based on this statue because I thought it looked great and I started to learn a little bit about it. So I'll try to go through a little bit of the story for you guys. Um, and, but if I get it wrong, uh, I apologize again. So let's get into the review of Devilman vs. Eamon. Alright, so Eamon, the Apocalypse of Devilman. Uh, as I understand it, um, is is a, an anime that takes place in this world where people um, can be possessed by demons or um, demons can take the form of humans. I'm not sure entirely what it is, but um, Akira is a human being. He's the main character, and he becomes possessed by the demon, Aemon, and that gives him these devil man powers. So the devil man is the purple dude you see up here with the wings, and Eamon is the giant red guy here on the bottom. And in this series, um, Akira, you know, he's living with this foster family. And he comes home one day and witnesses the death of two of the members, two of the children actually in this family. And his mind kind of snaps. So he, um, you know, uh, Eamon, who was possessing him at the time, is able to um, break out, break free and start wreaking havoc on the world and he he will go it doesn't matter humans demons whatever he's going to take them out and it, it's it's quite a gory show um if you're not into to blood and, and guts and things then maybe give this one a pass because it, it it doesn't shy away from that at all women children doesn't matter everyone's fair game for the demons in apocalypse of devilman so um but the final scene is really cool. It's a really great fight between Akira as Devilman and Eamon. Uh, it kind of takes place in his subconscious, so that's why they're able to both sort of be there at the same time. Um, and, you know, it's a really great scene, as I said. Lots of violence, lots of blood, gore. Uh, very cool. So check that out on YouTube if, if you have the time. Uh, and this scene here, or this piece, I should, get, I should say, before we go any further, Sculpted by Caleb Nefson, who is a tremendous sculptor. You probably recognize his work around the industry. He's done a lot of work for XM, uh, Scorpion, Moon Knight, Carnage. Um, so he's got quite a nice portfolio going for himself. I actually had the chance to meet him in Singapore, Little India, Singapore. We spent the day there and a really cool guy. So um, congratulations, Caleb, this statue. Uh, it's finally out in people's hands and I think he absolutely nailed it. I mean, let's take a look at the base. I mean, you look at the, the skull, let's go to the demon skull and bone pattern around, around the outside of the base here and it kind of just repeats all the way around. And then you've got uh, the rocky base itself. Now the final battle that I mentioned takes place in Akira's subconscious, as I said, and it's kind of this barren, walk, rocky wasteland uh, area so this this rocky scene that they're standing on really um, sort of puts them into that final battle scene and I like how um, it's kind of like this crater and you can see in the middle it's sort of cratering out it's like it gives it a lot of dynamic uh, a dynamic feel and the rocks 
sort of shooting off to the side and cascading out like that. It really looks like he's just sort of jumped down and caused this big kind of explosion of rocks. And then you got Devil Man jumping in. I mean, great design. You can see here how um, Devil Man is kind of attached to the arm of Eamon there, but but if you can see that there, it really does give you the sense that he's suspended in midair. I really like that aspect of the design. Uh, Sculpt-wise, I mean, as I said, Caleb absolutely killed this. There's texturing the hair on the legs and the shoulders and stuff is all detailed and textured. Uh, every little strand of hair. You look at the tails, you know, the spine, bony spinal cord on the tails and a little tuft of hair on the end. And you look at Devil Man's tail, same thing with like a spike on the end. The wings, I mean, you got all the veins and the wings and kind of a texture across there too. Bony sort of plating on the spikes and the bone part of the wings. The plates on Devil Man's legs. Uh, again, all, everything's textured, uh, everything's detailed. Um, I really like how they've stuck um, in the anime, Devil Man's got these big kind of broad shoulders and are like a real skinny kind of waist and they've really uh, replicated that uh, body type here. Uh, and Eamon, of course, is this big, you know, muscular. He's got the size advantage over Devil Man, of course, and, and that's a readily apparent here. Love the portrait on Eamon. And you look at the horns here, everything, again, these ribbed sort of bone texture here. Um, the fingers, you got the claws and all the little wrinkles on the fingers, claws on the feet, you get the horns on the heels, the horns on the elbows of both characters. Uh, you got the spinal area coming down the back of Devil Man there. I mean, the sculpt is great. I love the teeth. The teeth on both of them, they like really nicely um, sculpted each little tooth individually. You got the fangs on both guys there. Very, very good sculpt. I mean, absolutely killed it. As I said, Caleb Nefson did an amazing job here. Sculpt and design wise, I love this statue. Okay, so we'll get into the paint on this statue and there's some really cool features in the paintwork on this piece that we'll get through. Uh, let's start with the base. Uh, the, the skull and bone pattern around the outside of the base has a little bit of a different color than the rest. It's got a little bit of a, almost like a reddish tint to it, uh, which is good because that separates it from the rocks, which are mostly gray, but some nice highlights and shading in there to bring out that detail because it is a lot of detail even in those rocks. And then you look at the two characters, and that's really where this statue is going to shine. Let's look at Eamon. Really nice shading in the muscle areas to help bring out that texture and detail of Caleb's sculpt. Uh, the veins are all kind of highlighted or shaded uh, with a different color to help bring them out as well. The fingernails, the big sharp fingernails, nice clean lines there between the red and the black. Um, the, the tail on the back has almost uh, a chrome, chrome type of finish. It looks almost metallic. Uh, very cool finish there. Um, let's look at the teeth. The teeth of both characters. I always look at the teeth of a statue because I think that's really where a statue can look, uh, separate itself from that toyish look to a very realistic look. And these teeth look great. They have a really nice kind of glossy, um, realistic finish to them. Eamon's teeth have a little bit of red around them and then the gums and stuff. And it looks almost like there's blood in his mouth. Uh, really nice look there. Uh, Devil Man's teeth look really good too. Nice uh, sort of glossy finish uh, as well. Um, but what's really cool is there's all these areas like these transitions uh, between the color. Uh, like layers of color. You look at the wings here and it's, it's sort of... You know, down these bones, it's kind of a dark grayish black, and then it sort of transitions into a reddish color, purpley red towards the end of the or the tips of those bones, which is really cool. The wings off of Eamon's head, really nice sort of pearlescent finish on those. They give them sort of a almost a shimmering look to them. And then the bones, you know, the dark bones through those wings, really nicely painted. No slip ups, no paint uh, where it shouldn't be. Really, really nice job there. Uh, I love the purple on his on Devil Man's body. You know the plating again. You can't really put your finger on what color exactly it is. In different lighting, it looks uh, a little bit different. There's like layers of paint there that just kind of 
depending on which angle you're looking at it, you're picking up different colors all the time, which is really, really cool. Uh, you look at the back of Devilman, you got kind of this pinkish, fleshy look on the spine, and then it kind of transitions again into that almost sort of a metallic finish on the tail. It's just a really good paint job. Uh, nice, you know, the eyes on both characters are kind of a, a metallic silver, uh, so they really kind of shine in the light. It's just, it's a really fantastic paint job across the whole piece, really. I, I, I don't know how to say it enough. Uh, it looks really good. Um, the factory that did it, did an amazing job. Great paint job on this piece. Okay, so before we get into production and build quality, one thing I forgot to mention about the paint is the overall look of the wings on Devilman. Uh, I really like the vein work on the on the wings, but it's it's the white finish that they've given it. It gives it a look of translucency. And it really I, I had a chance to see this statue up close in one at Wonder Festival in Tokyo earlier this year. And it, it really fooled me. It honestly did. I even said to the owner of Figure I was like, man, I really like that translucent look you gave the wings. And he's like, no, no. That's paint job. Like I was like, oh crap! I kind of looked like a bit of an idiot, but he was kind of happy because it it fooled me, and, and that's what the look they were going for. So, um, anyways, production and build quality. I did do a unboxing video of this statue that I'll put a link to it at the end of this video if you haven't seen it. So I'm not going to take it all apart uh, in this review video. Um, it does uh, it does go together very nicely though. It is a nice and sturdy piece. Uh, it doesn't shake around or anything like that, so there's nothing to worry about um, in terms of uh, stability. Uh, there is quite a few... Um, the statue kind of makes me nervous in a way because it's got all these little bony parts and horns and teeth and, and claws and things that, that I feel like could break, but really the packaging, again, if you watch the, the unboxing video, the packaging was, is superb. It, it really... Uh, they did a nice job. It's, it's sort of that XM style box with the Velcro and everything. It's almost a bomb proof. I mean, the box is huge. You can see it here. Um, the, but the packaging presentation is really nice. Inside the box, you do get uh, an envelope full of uh, stuff here. And, and this is kind of neat. They've got like this wax seal uh, on the end of the envelope. It kind of gives it a bit of a medieval look. But inside here, uh, you've got the assembly guide, uh, so if you need ha a hand sort of putting it together, it does show you, you know, step by step and it shows you where the pieces go in the box. I like that a lot when statue companies do that. So you get that, and you also get a, let's see, a certificate of authenticity there with, with your uh, edition size number on there. There's only 200 pieces in the edition size of this statue, so a fairly rare piece in this day and age. And you also get a really nice uh, art print there. So a uh, nice uh, little bit of goodies there inside the box. Uh, you, you do get one switch out portrait here, and they call this one here in my hand the Nostalgic Head. Uh, this is sort of a throwback to the, the earlier Devilman series, the Gonagi, uh, I hope I said that right, uh, series. Um, it's where he's got sort of the smaller horns in the front of his head. In the Apocalypse of Devilman anime, Devilman has these big horns off the top of his head like this. So, so this one is based uh, more directly on the anime, and this is more on the earlier Devilman series. So again, it's easy to switch them out. You can, it's just a magnet fit, so you can just uh, pull his head off there and switch them out. Nice strong magnet. And, you know, I don't know which, which portrait I like better. It seems like whenever I switch it, I, I kind of change my mind to the one that's on that at the time. That, oh yeah, I like this one better. And then I'll switch them again and think, oh no, I like, I like this one better. So, um, I haven't made up my mind yet on which one I'm going to display. Uh, but, but the statue production-wise is really heavy. It's huge, as I said. Great packaging and presentation. Uh, it goes together fairly easy. You know, it's nice and sturdy at the end of the day, and uh, it's just a really nice, high-quality piece. There's not much more to say about it. All right, so we're going to wrap things up for this review. 
And as I said, this is the first statue we reviewed for Figurama. It's kind of the, the co-initial release for them. Uh, it's kind of released alongside their Ragnarok Thor diorama, which we'll have a review of that as well uh, later on. Uh, but really, for, their, for, if, for all intents and purposes, we can call this their first statue release. And, I mean, they just smashed it. They really did. It is, it's a beautiful statue. It's got all, everything going for it. High quality, heavy, sturdy, great packaging, great presentation, excellent paint. Uh, and, of course, Caleb Nefson absolutely nailed the sculpt. It's very true to the original series, but they've kicked up the detail a little bit from that animation, uh, which was a little simpler style, you know, with the hair detail, the muscle detail. I like the, uh, the nipple ring here. I forgot to mention that earlier. But great paint job, as I mentioned, all around. It's just a fantastic statue. You've got two, two portraits here for sort of two different eras of Devilman. Um, just a fantastic release from Figurama, so I'm really looking forward to seeing more from them. Um, you know, everything that they've put out uh, so far looks really good. Uh, we've got the Devilman, of course, Ragnarok Thor. They've got a Trigun uh, Vash the Stampede statue that I was really impressed with. Got to saw that, see that at Wonder Festival. Uh, Alley Card of Helsing, and then they just had their sellout of the Tokyo Ghoul diorama as well. So. Lots of really cool stuff, anime-related stuff from Figurama, so check them out if you haven't already. Uh, yeah, I, I love the statue. I think it turned out great. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. We're going to have a lot more stuff coming up for you. As I mentioned, another piece from Figurama, the Thor Ragnarok diorama. Uh, we're going to have um, some pieces from Kinetic Ketz. We're going to take a look at their War Heroes diorama. Uh, we've got some Sume pieces coming up, uh, more from Sideshow, more from XM. Uh, so lots and lots to come up, so stay tuned to the channel and we'll talk to you guys later. Uh, oh, one thing to mention, if you haven't checked out uh, our new show Shelf Space that I'm co-hosting with Gina uh, B from Gina B Collecting, uh, check that out on YouTube. There's a, a playlist on my channel down below. Uh, you'll see the first two episodes there, so check that out and let us know what you think of that show. It's a live, live chat, uh, live stream show. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you guys soon.